I welcome all of you to this dedication convocation of the Everly College of Arts and Sciences on the campus of West Virginia University. We gather here today to commemorate a special milestone in the life of West Virginia University and to publicly thank those whose generosity will provide the enrichment for students, faculty, and staff of this college and this university for generations to come. Never before has West Virginia University honored a donor by naming an academic school or college. The Everly family's generosity has had a tremendous positive impact on this university, the College of Arts and Sciences, and upon the students who will pass through its doors. On May 10th, we gathered in this historic and beautiful Woodburn Circle on another warm day to announce an endowment by the Everly Family Charitable Trust and the Everly Family Foundation of Uniontown, Pennsylvania to fund professorships, scholarships, and faculty and program development activities in the College of Arts and Sciences. That announcement itself was an historic for it moment for it recognized the largest gift to the campaign for West Virginia University, a fundraising program of the WVU Foundation that has been conducted since 1988. In addition, that gift boosted attainment during that campaign over the $102 million initial target. This gift has great significance to the Everly College of Arts and Sciences and to West Virginia University as a whole. Today's dedication program brings together individuals who will share their own personal and certain perspective on the importance of this opportunity. In recognition of the heat and because you have programs which provide information on the speakers, the speakers have asked that the introductions be very brief. We are honored to have with us on this important occasion a special friend of West Virginia University who serves as the Secretary of Education and the Arts for the state of West Virginia. Barbara Harmon Schamberger completed her bachelor's degree from Western University's College of Arts and Sciences in 1985. That same year, Ms. Schamberger was designated WVU's 20th Rhodes Scholar. She went on for graduate work at Oxford and University of Virginia and is now returned to the state. She is with us today representing public higher education in the state of West Virginia and to bring greetings on behalf of Governor Caperton and the people of West Virginia. Please join me in welcoming Secretary Barbara Harmon Schamberger. Thank you, Mr. President. Today is a glorious day for West Virginia University and for the Everly College of Arts and Sciences. And on behalf of Governor Caperton, I bring greetings, but in a special thank you to the Everly family. As many of you know, we struggle each year to find the money to fund our institutions institutions that have brought this whole state glory and honor and a nationwide reputation for academic excellence. That struggle, however, is greatly aided and furthered by this gift to the College of Arts and Sciences. Even though this has been a year where we've seen our faculty salaries raised, we are still 75% of the SREB average. That's the Southern Regional Education Board and is the lowest paid board in the United States. The Everly gift has given to us a future that, quite frankly, we can now afford to buy. Much of education is about purchase. Everything from buildings and textbooks and beakers to the, to the privilege and honor a student has to be able to go to school because someone cared enough to leave a bequest and a gift to give them a future. The governor is deeply touched by this gift. Higher education has become a foreground for him just as public education was in his first term. We have made all of West Virginia grateful, happy, and proud. And we thank the Everly family and the strong leadership of President Bucklew in leading this college forward into the 21st century. I thank you very much for the honor to join you today and hope this celebration lives forever in your mind as a moment when you could say we did our very best and we really were rewarded for it. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Schamberger. 
Today we, we are quite pleased to welcome home as the keynote speaker for this historic event, a former student body president, Peter J. Kalis. Mr. Kalis is a native of Wheeling, West Virginia, and a 1972 graduate of West Virginia University. He was WVU's 16th Rhodes Scholar. After completing his doctoral work at Oxford, he went on to Yale for his law work. He now serves on the visiting committee of the College of Arts and Sciences. Please join me in welcoming Peter J. Kalis. President Bucklew, members of the Board of Trustees and the Board of Advisors, members of the Eberly family, members of the University and the Eberly Foundation, my fellow members of the advisory board of this great college, administration, faculty, and distinguished speakers and guests. It is yet another cruel reminder of the onslaught of middle age when one retrieves from the closet an academic gown earned and last worn 17 years ago to notice that in the interim it has become a bit snugger and that certain winged creatures have visited it in the closet. Accordingly, I come to you here today both tighter and better ventilated than the average keynote speaker. Any introduction of a speaker scrapes the speaker's surface, like a fingernail on a peppermint leaf giving birth to an explosion of fragrance, if it's a kind introduction, and like a fingernail on a blackboard if it is not. President Bucklew's kind introduction of me is too generous, and though we are thus enveloped in peppermint fragrance, I should note that the introduction necessarily only touched upon the surface of my feelings towards this university. I feel like proof rock reduced to a formulated phrase, pinned and wriggling to the wall, as Eliot said, unpinned from the wall, and in this audience I'm surely not alone in this respect. The introduction could not possibly have conveyed an adequate picture of my relationship and feelings toward this institution. You would not know, for example, of a five or six year old boy growing up in Wheeling next door to a WVU All-American football player of that era named Chuck Halley, who later went on to star with the Dallas Cowboys, or that nearly 40 years later that boy still conjures up memories of the great mountaineer warrior trudging home after battle in his blue and gold. Nor would you know that this middle-aged speaker's first sports memory, at least on television, is of that tragic moment when Darrell Imhoff sank a left-handed hook shot, enabling the California Golden Bears to steal away the national championship from our mountaineers and Jerry West. More profoundly, you would not know of the dreams that an immigrant father born in 1894 had for his two sons and how those dreams were largely realized at the end of his long life when his boys were accepted to study at this great university. That father, who rode horseback with a sword at his side during the First World War, died knowing that this university was propelling his sons towards success in the 21st century. And finally, you would have no way of knowing that this speaker's inner core froths over with notions that in this era of resurfacing hatred and division, liberal education is at once the challenge of and the solution to our times the most durable institution of which over the decades and centuries we dearly hope this is one are constructed on a solid foundation of liberal values, values that have stood the test of time and that have adapted to the changing forces and mores of a changing world. All of which brings me to the point of this address. 
we gather here to honor an institution and a family at a happy confluence in their lives. I say confluence and not intersection because paths that intersect by definition diverge. But like the great Ohio descending from the Allegheny and the Monongahela, this family and this institution, because of the event that we note here today, will flow forever conjoined in the eyes and minds of men and women. With their unprecedented generosity, focusing as it does on this university's College of Arts and Sciences, the members of the Eberly family have reaffirmed a number of traditional linkages between themselves and the ideals of higher education, between southwestern Pennsylvania and this state and its university, and most importantly for purposes of this address, between education, liberal education, and freedom. In our violent world, notions of freedom are often embedded in their converse images. Shackles hanging from innocent limbs, dark prison cells separating men and women of conscience from their families and their aspirations, and the punishing visual images of men, women, and children feeling the boot of ethnic strife and religious hatred. The Everly's gift will not make these people free, at least not directly. But in the millennia that define our ongoing history, there is a more basic freedom that, once achieved, will liberate the suffering souls of times yet to come. And the Everly's gift, along with the dedicated teachers and researchers who will give that gift wings over time, will allow us to promote and to advance as righteously as any army of liberators relentlessly toward this most fundamental aspect to freedom. Freedom from the tyranny of small minds. The great injustice, injustices of our times, times past, and I fear times yet to come, are rooted in small ideas hatched by small minds. That is, notions that run counter to human dignity, to the aspirational quality of human life, to the brotherhood and sisterhood of all who inhabit this earth, and to the free, robust, uninhibited life of the mind. For those of you here who fought and won World War II, so that the rest of us might flourish, so that freedom might flourish. Your beneficiaries in my generation can only glimpse your sadness as you see resurfacing the perverse pursuit of ethnic purity. For those of you who have been in the vanguard of women's rights, the rest of us cannot fathom your grief at the indignity of strategic rape in Bosnia or the brutalization of women elsewhere in this world for the high crime of bearing a female child. And for those of you who have challenged our unfortunate legacy of racial classification in this country, which, lest we forget, included among its high-minded founding principles the dehumanizing three-fifths clause of the Constitution, we lament with you the long strides that must be taken here and elsewhere to achieve racial justice. To cure any of these afflictions, however, programmatic action without a core of moral sensibility founded on the great texts and values of our civilization is as misdirected and potentially dangerous as a pistol in the hands of a child. Can one possibly hope to improve the human condition without first understanding it? Is the study of the history of our achievements and failures irrelevant to our current concerns? Our inquiries into the workings of our minds, our social groupings, and our political institutions outside the scope of study necessary to liberate us from our fatal flaws 
do we have nothing to learn from the great literature of Periclean in Athens or Elizabethan in England or Tsarist Russia without conceding for a moment that all philosophy is but a footnote to Plato? Do we have nothing to learn from the Greek masters or for that matter from the Eastern mystics or the philosophers of the Scottish Enlightenment? Do the world's great religions, quite apart from their transcendent qualities, have nothing to teach us as repositories of artifacts, customs, and values arising from human struggle? Must we not explore the worldwide antecedents to black culture to fully comprehend its contributions to and potentialities within our society? And to remain the master and not the servant of technology, should we not apprehend the basics of Newton and Einstein, Descartes and Darwin, in order to understand the profoundly important scientific subtleties of our age? The importance of liberal education in the 21st century will be and is what it always has been to free us from the tyranny of small minds. As a term of art, liberal education is simply redundant. The challenge of our age and the message of the Everly's gift is that, as a term of art, liberal education must never be permitted to become an oxymoron. Who in this crowd, who in this crowd, would challenge the proposition that to be educated means that one must, not should, have his or her roots in a liberal education? Who among you would dispute that a well-rounded sensibility grounded in liberal education is the most reassuring characteristic of great world leaders? Or that its absence causes one to wonder whether the thin membrane of civilization that envelops our world will once again be punctured by those whose ambitious reach exceeds their moral grasp. Earlier I spoke of those dedicated teachers and researchers who will give the Eberly's gift wings over time. For you, my friends, and many of you are my friends for over two decades, this is not only a day of consecration, but also one of challenge. The challenge is one that faces all men and women of high learning and ideals, and one that was formulated by W.H. Auden in 1939 in words that, sadly, are equally forceful today. In the nightmare of the dark, all the dogs of Europe bark, and the living nations wait, each sequestered in its hate. Intellectual disgrace stares from every human face, and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye. Follow, poet, follow right to the bottom of the night. With your unconstraining voice, still persuade us to rejoice. With the farming of a verse, make a vineyard of the curse. Sing of human unsuccess, in a rapture of distress. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise. I return necessarily to the Eberly's gift, the Eberly family, who give us this great occasion to gather here in Morgantown. To them, I apologize for the circuitous route that I have followed in this address before dwelling further upon their contribution to this university. For without the detour of the last 10 minutes or so, I might simply have referred to them as great citizens of their community, as successful business people, and as philanthropists par excellence. They are all those things, of course but they are much, much more. They are promoters of freedom of the most basic sort, freedom from the tyranny of small minds. Their gift will last for generations, and predictably, but in myriad unpredictable ways, 
it will flourish in the 21st century and beyond as those generations of students who traverse these very grounds will leave here with their minds intangibly enriched as a result of the Eberle's most tangible of gifts to this university. As a graduate of this university, as a member of the advisory board to the, the Eberle College of Arts and Sciences, and most importantly, as one who shares their hopes for and concerns about the human condition and their belief that liberal education can improve it, I thank the Everly family, the entire family, for their generosity and their prescience. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. You're a special representative and unusually strong friend of this institution. Thank you for bringing this message in our behalf. Our next speaker represents the more than 4,000 students currently enrolled in the Eberly College of Arts and Sciences. Heather Jacob, a native of Kanawha County, is a senior majoring in English. She was named an Arts and Science Scholar during the 1992 and 93 years. She maintains a 4.0 grade point average. Please welcome Heather Jacob. When I was 17 years old, I made the decision to become a teacher. I began the college selection process and was interested in finding a campus where I had the opportunity to, to interact with exhilarating faculty in an environment which would prove enriching for me personally. After an extensive search, I selected West Virginia University, and I'm glad they accepted me. Since enrolling, I have found that my selection was the right one for a number of reasons. My classes have not only been interesting, educationally enriching, informative, but they have also been challenging. I selected as my college major the most feared class in high school, English. Many challenges awaited me, including that of justifying my choice to my English-phobic friends. Despite the challenges, I have learned much from my professors and am happy with my choice. From my drama and British literature professors, I learned the importance of literature, of understanding and communicating with other people. Their genuine interest in the literature and in the students has helped me to enjoy education. Also, I feel that I will become a competent teacher as I have had worthy role models. Several years ago, the College of Arts and Sciences established a scholarship program to recognize outstanding students. During the 1991-92 academic year, I participated in the competitive selection process of the scholarship program. As one of the 25 arts and sciences scholars, I recognize that we as scholars have a special reputation and an obligation to the college. The arts and sciences scholarship program will be greatly enhanced by the Everly gift we are recognizing today. Future arts and sciences scholars, now known as Everly College of Arts and Sciences Scholars, will echo my appreciation as the scholarship helps many to help pursue their education and realize their dreams. On behalf of the students of the Everly College of Arts and Sciences, I would like to thank the Everly family for their generous gift, as it will create many opportunities for arts and sciences students and provide a stimulating atmosphere for education and research. All students in the college will be affected by this gift and they too will appreciate their decision to attend West Virginia University. The most important part of a student's education is the interaction with faculty interested in teaching. This university and this college have a distinguished group of faculty. It is my pleasure to introduce one of those distinguished faculty members, Dr. Kenneth Showalter, Eberly Family Professor of Physical Chemistry. Professor Showalter. Thank you, Heather. It is a great honor to represent the faculty in this dedication convocation. The gifts from the Eberly Family Charitable Trust and the Eberly Foundation greatly impact the faculty in many ways. I am proud to speak for the faculty and, and convey our heartfelt thanks to the Eberly Family and especially to Carolyn Eberly, Eberly Blaney for investing in the future of the college. 
The College of Arts and Sciences at West Virginia University is widely recognized for its outstanding undergraduate programs and excellence in teaching. It is important to emphasize that West Virginia University is now emerging as a major research university. To enhance the research mission of the college and university, nine Everly Family Distinguished Professorships were established by gifts from the Everly Family Charitable Trust. To expand on this noteworthy beginning, eight additional distinguished professorships have been created in the college. While many of the new professorships will be dedicated to the promotion of research excellence, some will recognize and foster excellence in instruction as well as in public service. There is currently a national debate throughout higher education in the United States concerning excellence in teaching versus excellence in research. Teaching and research have been billed as opposing endeavors, one detracting from the other. I believe that this debate has missed the mark. While it may be possible to have good teaching without research and good research without teaching, to have truly outstanding teaching and truly outstanding research, these endeavors must exist concurrently. The teacher engaged in frontier research relays knowledge and experience at the cutting edge. Even topics that are not new but are part of the foundation of a subject take on extra vigor and vitality in the hands of a teacher involved in research. The researcher engaged in teaching is continually receiving fresh inspirations and new ideas from his or her students. There is no better way to learn, to really learn a topic than to teach it. Even after you believe you know a topic, a student asks a particularly probing question and the learning process is reinitiated. You often gain an entirely new understanding and appreciation for a topic when trying to answer one of these probing questions. Therefore, outstanding teaching and outstanding research result from the intimate intertwining of these endeavors, if not always on an individual basis, certainly with the faculty as a whole. A successful symbiosis of teaching and research is the hallmark of a great university. Virtually all of the faculty in the College of Arts and Sciences are engaged in teaching and research. The Everly Family Distinguished Professorships lift the entire faculty in their research endeavors. These professorships provide departments with well-known researchers, bringing national and international visibility to the departments, college, and university, as well as expertise enhancing the development of research among colleagues. As the West Virginia Distinguished Professor of Physical Chemistry, I have worked with a talented group of faculty, postdoctoral associates, and graduate students carrying out research in nonlinear dynamics in the departments of chemistry, math, physics, and chemical engineering. This group, known as the Nonlinear Dynamics Research Group, is one of three groups recently awarded $3.6 million from the National Science Foundation. I have also had the opportunity through my professorship to interact with distinguished scientists in Europe and Japan representing West Virginia University, and I have brought internationally recognized scientists to this campus. These are examples of how the investment in human resources has immeasurable benefits. The Everly Family Endowment for Faculty Development will provide support for renewal of faculty vitality and expertise. The endowment will assist faculty in the preparation of grant proposals, redesign of existing courses and development of new courses, support travel to conferences and workshops, and support innovative research projects. This support will significantly enhance the teaching and research endeavors in the college. The gifts of the Everly Foundation and the Everly Family Charitable Trust will have an enormously positive impact on the newly named Everly College of Arts and Sciences and in turn on West Virginia University. These are investments in human resources. To paraphrase Robert Persig in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, the real university is not the buildings or the campus grounds. The real university is a state of mind. It is that great heritage of rational thought that has been brought down to us through the centuries. It's a state of mind 
which is regenerated throughout the centuries by a body of people who traditionally carry the title of professor. The impact of the Ever Everly family gift is the strengthening of the real university. While student learning and faculty teaching and research are vitally important in the college, strong leadership is of equal importance. Gerald E. Lang assumed the position of dean in April 1987. Under his strong leadership, the college has developed a series of initiatives supporting faculty development, a college-wide scholarship program, and a program to encourage the innovative and effective use of computers in the classroom. Dean Lang. It is appropriate that Woodburn Circle serves as the location for this historic dedication convocation. The three buildings that comprise the circle, Chitwood, Woodburn, and Martin Hall, have served as witness to the many changes that have occurred at West Virginia University, changes that have affected programs and influenced people, changes that have led to a stronger and better university changes that have affected all of us in individual ways. These buildings, by their very presence, attest to the solid foundation and the strong traditions of academic excellence that reflect the past 126 years of this institution. The preservation of these buildings is the preservation of a long and great heritage. The 120 living alumni are a measure of our success as a state-assisted land-grant university. Our 24 Rhodes and 13 Truman Scholars, most of whom were arts and sciences majors, give another measure of student success and have established an institutional tradition that is envied throughout this country. And yet, no matter how strong the university's tradition appears to be, it has been marked by change. And it is through this change that there has been the continuing renewal of the commitment to students and their education, to research and scholarship as a way of expanding and developing new knowledge, to service to humankind through the application of knowledge. Established in 1895, the College of Arts and Sciences has played a critical role in the life of this university for 99 years. Today, the college serves as the academic heart of the undergraduate mission of this institution, providing over 60% of all of the undergraduate student credit hours taught on campus. The centrality of the college's programs is evident when one considers that every student, regardless of their major or the college or school from which they will graduate, that student will earn 50% or more of their degree through the various curricula found in the College of Arts and Sciences. The college is an academic institution with a proud and distinguished past, an institution with a robust and active present, and an institution with an even more exciting future. The eight and one half million dollar endowment that underlies this dedication and the naming of the Everly College of Arts and Sciences is the keystone of the foundation for that future. This gift from the Everly Foundation and the Everly Family Trust is so crafted that through its endowment will come continued support, thus guaranteeing the opportunity to annually renew and enhance the commitment to a contemporary curriculum taught by an exciting and distinguished faculty throughout the years to come. I have been quoted as saying that West Virginia University is a well-kept secret. No longer will this be the case. The success of the campaign for West Virginia University has significantly changed our horizons. This penultimate gift of the campaign, commemorated by the naming of the Eberly College of Arts and Sciences, sends a clear message of the belief in and support of the college and the values for which it stands. On behalf the students and faculty of today and tomorrow, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to the family and especially to Carolyn Everly Blaney, 
1946 alum for your belief in the critical role of the arts and sciences for the future education of all students. The responsibility for good stewardship rests with the leadership of the college. I offer my pledge to exercise responsible care over this endowment that you have entrusted to us. We will serve you well. Thank you so very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Carolyn Eberly Blaney, a 1946 graduate of the College of Arts and Sciences. Carolyn also serves as a trustee of the Eberly Foundation and the Eberly Family Charitable Trust. A dedicated WV graduate, she is a member of the board of the WVU Foundation, serves on the advisory board of the Eberly College of Arts and Sciences, and is a member of the executive committee of the campaign for West Virginia University. In 1992, she was named the most loyal mountaineer by the West Virginia University Student Foundation. Please join me in recognizing Carolyn Everly Blaney. President Bakru. I would like to welcome my family this afternoon, my husband Gerald Blaney, our daughter and son-in-law Ruth and Kent Carter and their daughter Sarah. Ruth is a trustee of the Everly Foundation. Our daughter-in-law and her husband Cindy and Welty DeBoer and their children Allison and Kelly, our grandchildren. Dana Blaney has just started her third year in law school in New Orleans, and her schedule wouldn't permit her to be with us today. My brother, Robert Everly, and his wife, Eloise. Robert is president of the Everly Foundation and manager of the Everly Family Trust. Two of Eloise's five children are with us today, Mimi and Bill Kahn, both of whom hold degrees from West Virginia University. My aunt and uncle, Anne and Ralph Everly and their children, Gilbert and Barbara, who also hold WVU degrees. And Pat Miller and her husband, Tom. Pat is secretary of the Everly Foundation. I want to thank all of you for being here and for your continued support of me. The Everly Foundation was established in 1963 by my father, Orville Everly. The Everly Family Charitable Trust was established by Will at his death in 1983. Today, the trustees of the foundation include mother and dads, three children, and four of their six living grandchildren. The major thrust of both the foundation and the family trust has long been undergraduate education at the college and university level. West Virginia University has meant a great deal to me in my life, and I can think of no more positive way to express my gratitude than to be afforded this opportunity of support. I'm most grateful to the trustees of the Everly Foundation for making it possible. This will be redundant, but I, it bears repeating. The College of Arts and Sciences is the heart of this university. 100% of all graduates of West Virginia University take classes in the College of Arts and Sciences. Of 60% of all graduating students from this university have taken at least half of their credits in the College of Arts and Sciences. WVU is justifiably proud of its 24 Rhodes Scholars. Of these 24, 21 have come from the College of Arts and Sciences. The Everly Foundation trustees are pleased to recognize this highly respected college for its excellent programs and its commitment to teaching and research. The distribution of Everly funds will support 17 Everly Family Distinguished Professorships. In addition, $1 million will be used in support of scholarships, $1 million for faculty development endowment, and $1 million for program development endowment. 
I personally look forward to the day when scholastic achievement ranks side by side with athletic achievement. A superior athlete A superior athlete in many colleges and universities today is given a full scholarship without regard of his or her ability to pay, while a superior scholar may be required to furnish family income information which may preclude him or her from getting a full scholarship. I hope that ability alone may someday make fine scholars on a par with fine athletes where scholarship monies are concerned. The College of Arts and Sciences will celebrate its 100th anniversary in 1994, and the Everly family is most honored to have the college bear our name as it enters its second century. This is the first time that an academic unit of WVU has been named for a benefactor, and believe me, we are most grateful. On behalf of the Everly family, thank you, President Bucklew, Dean Lang, and your wonderful staff, especially Lisa Swick, I know how hard you have all worked and how efficiently you have all worked to make this day a success. We thank all of you for this special day of recognition. The trustees and I wish you a bright future and golden rainbows. Carolyn, I couldn't think, help but think of that famous old line about Notre Dame a few years ago, that they were busy trying to create a university their football team could be proud of. Carolyn, thank you so much. Everly family, thank you so much. I know that Carolyn introduced the Everly family, but I would like to now ask them to stand this is the president of the Everly Family Foundation, Robert Everly, and his wife Eloise, Gerald Blaney, and the rest of the Everly family. Would you all please stand and let us once again thank you. I hope you recognize your special place today. We gave you a tent along with the band and the food. Also in the audience today are members of the WVU Foundation Board of Directors and members of the Executive Committee of the Capital Campaign. I might mention that Carolyn belongs to both of those groups, and it is indeed their hard work and leadership that helped bring us to this day. With me today uh, are some people I want to introduce. I'm going to ask them to stand and remain standing, and at the end of these introductions, please join me in welcoming. First, two former presidents of West Virginia University, Diane Reinhardt and Harry Heffler. Please remain standing. They're going to follow instructions you didn't, and you need to now wait until I've completed these. They'll be joined by Kay Goodwin, who's with us in the audience. Kay is representing the Board of Trustees of this university. Representing the Western University Board of Advisors is Daniel Wharton from Parkersburg. Please, a special greeting to these special guests. Another group I would like to ask to stand. Please wait till, I've, till they're all standing. First, the members of the university cabinet. I will not introduce them by name. Cabinet, if you would. The deans of the university who are with us today. Members of the Everly College of Arts and Science Advisory Board, and the faculty and staff of the Everly College of Arts and Sciences. Would you please stand? Greetings to all of you. Thank you very much. As we close this ceremony, we want to re reveal to you in this assembly 
the commemorative plaque that will mark this historic day for those who follow us. In the grassy area to my left, uh, between Woodburn Hall and Chitwood Hall, a plaza is under construction. It is nearly completed. That area will contain three markers, one to commemorate Woodburn Circle, one to commemorate the, college, the Everly College of Arts and Sciences, and one to commemorate the Curly Isaac Reed School of Journalism. I'd now like to ask in Jerry Lang to escort Carolyn Blaney to the easel where they will unveil the plaque for the Everly College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you very much. Thank you. The plaque provides a very special message, providing both a, de both a description of the history of this special college and the importance uh, and magnitude of the Everly commitment to this college. We will have this plaque if it possible, move back to the reception area and I would invite each of you to read it personally. As we close, I invite all of you to enjoy the company of those around you in celebration of this historic occasion at a reception here in the Woodburn Circle that will be in the tents immediately toward University Avenue. However, I would ask you to please remain in your places until after the platform party is exited.